When it comes to iconic Japanese figures, there is really none more iconic than the geisha. Poised and impeccably elegant in their kimono, their faces famously adorned with vivid white foundation, geisha are instantly identifiable. Snow at Fukagawa is one of three famous paintings by a master of ukiyo-e painting named Kitagawa Utamoro. His painting hints what life was like behind the scenes of the geisha in the early Edo period. This painting shows a scene of geishas preparing food and enjoying the snow together. We can see from the painting that it is buzzing with activity. In the forefront, we see a geisha carrying a succulent fish mm. on a red earthenware tray. On her left is a geisha playing with a cat and a child. Next, we see a geisha applying makeup while looking in a hand mirror. Finally nearby, we see another geisha carrying a heavy load of laundry quietly off stage. But how do you become a geisha in the first place? What roles did they play in society? And why were their faces painted white? Geishas are highly respected professionals who train for years to master several types of arts, including the art of conversation to keep men entertained and engaged, the art of dance, which is often accompanied by fan, and the art of music, such as playing the samisan, a lute-like instrument. Many geishas are also adept at flower arranging, performing the tea ceremony, or calligraphy. It's hard to believe, given the level of femininity ascribed to geisha culture, that geishas were all men back in the 13th century. Male geishas are not called geishas. They were known as takamuchi, which translates to drum bearer. To beat the drum was to flatter someone, something that takamuchis were trained to do. They were loud, boisterous, and good-humored. They told jokes, performed outrageous stories, and flattered their guests. But why did they also paint their faces white? Back in the 13th century, when electricity wasn't around just yet. Instead, most facilities were dimly lit by candlelight, which makes it difficult for takamuchis to be the life of the party. To ensure their faces were more visible and recognizable in poorly lit rooms, they came up with a brilliant idea to paint their faces with a white, thick foundation to enhance their skin tones and to contour their faces. Taikomochis originated in the 1200s from the G sect of Pure Land Buddhism, a sect which focused on dancing and performing elaborate tea ceremonies. These men advised and entertained their feudal lords known as daimyo in equal measures and came to be known as debushu or comrades in English. By the 1500s, they became known as otagishu or hanashishu as they concentrated their skills in storytelling, humor, and conversation. Alongside their role as entertainers, they were involved in strategic military planning and gave advice on important matters of war. Above all, they fought in battle at the side of their lord. During the peaceful times of the 17th century, taikomuchis were needed to offer advice on battle strategies. So, they evolved into court jesters, much like the ones we know from medieval England. In some way, taikomuchis are connected to the Japanese comedians of today. Tune into any channel in Japan, and you'll see a variety of programs featuring over-the-top jokers keeping the live studio audiences laughing hysterically. Taikomuchis declined in the 18th century as the popularity of the female geisha spread across the country. Imagine, it only took 20 years for the geisha to dominate over 500-year lifespan of the taikomuchis. Ah! The decline of taikomuchis sped up with World War II, and the taikomuchis continue to decline today. Although there are still small communities of geishas in Kyoto and Tokyo, there are only five taikomuchis in Japan. Four of the takomuchis are in Tokyo, and one of them is in Kyoto. For more historical topics to impress people you barely know, please like, subscribe, and share.